to Vietnam, stopping over in uh, Nairobi, then Bangkok, then to Vietnam, 19 hours. Here we go. Just got to uh, Nairobi. I couldn't find my gate for a while, but I think I'm on the right track. <laughs> So I've arrived in um, Bangkok. This airport is so sick. Like it's, it's up. It looks like a snake. Oh, like honestly, that's the best I can explain. It looks like a snake. It's so cool. But I think I found the right gate. And, um, my flight is uh, in like an hour and a half. So like 90% humidity here right now. It's you can see my face. I'm literally I'm I'm dying. Uh, so yeah, my flight's in like an hour and a half. So now I just sit and wait. Dad, 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 dad. Hit the road, dad, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. With the road, dad, don't you come back no more. What you say? Hit the road, dad, don't you come back no more, no more, no more. With the road, Jack, don't you come back no more. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. With the road, Jack, don't you come back no more. What you say? Hit the road, Jack, don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. With the road, Jack, don't you come back no more. Day two in Vietnam. Uh, I arrived last night and. Uh, I didn't film it because it was literally it was such it was such a stressful process. Like I got out the the airport and you kind of realise the language barriers that are, that are here and why there's such a need for English teachers because you get out the airport and someone just goes taxi and you don't know what they mean. Like it's oh, you know what they mean but like um, they don't know what you mean. So you can put an address in, you can Either you have to kind of work out a fee beforehand and they drive like absolute idiots here. Like this. I was on the highway and the two lanes, so there obviously there's two lanes where all you see everyone drives on the lane, right? And so there's two cars in the lanes, the taxi driver that I'm with just comes in between those two cars, shoots a little bit so, in, so they know he's there and just goes in between and around. Like nobody sticks to the lanes here. It's, everyone, everyone's driving on the wrong side of the roads with the scooters and everything. So today is going to be like my settle in day kind of. I went out last night um, to a few other pubs or whatever. Um, I saw Westlake, uh, got a bit of a feel for the roads and everything. Met some other teachers uh, and it was really cool. I've already had like 20, 20 or so offers for houses. Like it's, everything works so quickly um, and I can show you. Uh, where I am so it's a bit it's it's foggy now but you can see all of like the architecture everything um, the airport's down that way there's a really cool place called Westlake uh, which is like down that side um, yeah and a lot of the places here like, have rooftop gardens stuff like that so it's really, it's, you can see there's orange groves down there, it's crazy. So yeah, today I'm trying to gonna get a scooter, um, I'm gonna go try some, I don't even know what to, how to say it, some uh, meal that all like, the locals and oysters love, and it's like boncho or something, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, the street names are hard to come up like, to figure your head around as well. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go look at two apartments now and then I will uh, show you guys what's cracking in Vietnam. So 
I got some puncha, as I say. Puncha. Puncha. Traditional Vietnamese dish. It's been a pretty sick day so far. Um, I chowed that puncha, learned a little bit of Vietnamese. Xin chow. That means hello. Yeah, it's really cool. Everything kind of just works in its own way here. Like, you just fit into how Vietnam works. The city kind of, well, not Vietnam, but Hanoi in specific, it kind of just sucks you in. And I've, I've only been here for a day, but I feel like I'm really part of the city. And uh, I know it's going to take some time to get used to, but like, it's it's really, it's it's in another, it controls itself in a sense. Everybody, everything just flows, everything works. Everything, it's it's a mess, but it's, it just, it controls itself. And uh, But I really find um, profound and quite astonishing is the way that you have all these food stores, family owned food stores on the side of the road where they make traditional meals and you'll get the builders that will come and eat and the workers and you know, the, la the, the, the blue collar workers. And then next thing someone in their Bentley or their Jag will park outside and you know they're in a business suit, they've got a nice watch. Um, and they're sitting at the same little kiddies tables that you're sitting at, and the same tables as the 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 workers are sitting at, but they're enjoying their time just as much. And they could go and eat at a five star restaurant if they really wanted to, but they stay true to who they are, and they're happy. Like it just shows that you don't need money to be happy. You just it's it's who you are and your culture and your environment and what you believe in, and uh, it doesn't matter on your your financial status, your race, your creed, your sexuality, nothing like that. It's 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 so much more to that and being in a place that's not as pretentious as where we come from, it really just opens your eyes to how the world works and what true happiness you can find if you don't find yourself searching for money all the time. I really just think that, you know, there's so much more to learn out there. Um, and lots of us are stuck in our own little bubble. We're in an everyday cycle of you know, what can I make? How much can I make? What title can I get? What can I buy that other people can't buy? You know, and it's just being in a place like this. I mean, all the houses are dirt ugly, but inside they're nice for comfort, you know, because it makes them happy. And they find happiness in the smaller things, you know, family and culture. And, you know, it's not about wealth and, and stuff. So I just think that there's so much to learn. And I'm on my journey now of learning. And, I really it's it's been an amazing two days so far and who knows what else is going to come what else i can learn in the next few months that's the first two days done hope you guys enjoyed it obviously it's my first vlog so it wasn't too good well it wasn't good at all actually um but in the future you know as i get more used to it more better equipment uh better idea of where, of where to vlog in the city just to keep you guys updated and show you what Hanoi is like and to let you guys experience my journey from home. Yep, yeah, that's all for now. Peace.